Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Sunday stream. Where we do a little bit of whatever I want today. We're going to be playing some more of our Final Fantasy X to New Yevon run through. Here we go. It's time to play. Boop. All right. So let's load our save from where we left off. We are on chapter four. We are on chapter four. All right. So, um, oh, we got to do exclamation popcorn. Pin that shit. Pin. There we go. The maker who made the ears headband had orange and gray kitty ears and also does customs. Oh my god, put a link in the Discord so I can take a look. Because I have looked. I have looked and there aren't a lot. I mean, I'm sure there are other custom ones, and but those are kind of expensive. I don't know. I actually would really like to get orange ones, and I have and I have done some looking, but they're all quite expensive. Or non-existent. Okay, so the next comm sphere one we are going to do is actually going to be on Meehen, which works, which is a little bit different than the other comm spheres we've been doing. So let's go to Meehen High Road. Instead of just watching scenes, there's like a whole interactive thing that we do. So here we go. Rin is going to explain. I thought... He's supposed to come out of there. Maybe I'm supposed to pan away and come back? Oh, I heard him. Yeah, you pan away and go back. It's not a zoom thing. Okay. Is something wrong? Lately, a number of strange events have been occurring here on the high road. Our hover was destroyed. Also, the drone Makina malfunctioned. I've launched an investigation, but clues have been hard to come by. Forgive me for asking in such a busy time, but might I request your help in this matter? Sure, Rin, I'll help you. Certainly. I am relieved to hear it. With your help, the mystery will be solved in no time. But what should we do? I have placed a number of modified comm spheres along the high road for use in our investigation. Should you find anything suspicious, please report it to me. All right, right trigger to switch comm spheres, B to call Rin. With that, I bid you good luck. They're in the Netherlands, so this stuff might take a while to get to you. Well, that's true, but you did give me the thought, like, I should really be looking at more custom ones on Etsy and things like that. I bet I would be um, much more, I would, I would find much more success in getting some orange ones. Okay, so there's tons of different scenes you can watch here, but which scenes you watch will really depend on like a certain thing that happens at the end. And I know what I want to happen at the end, because of course it changes what prize you get for like what ends up being the solution to all of this craziness going on in Meehan will change what prize you get. So I know what I want to do. So for this first part, we're going to go to the ruins. Let's see, it's three, I think there's no others. Yeah, so we're going to go to the ruins. And we're gonna watch this ruins Machina run around. They have ca Calico Cat. Oh my God, Calicos are so cute. Okay, so you can watch him run around. What's up, little Machina? Okay, so that's that one. And then once we've watched the Machina run around, we're gonna switch. And we're gonna go over to New Road. Oh wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's switch again. I think I might have just messed it up. I was supposed to call Rin and I forgot to. Are we gonna see the Machina run around again or is it gonna give us a different scene? Hopefully it gives us the same scene again. I forgot I was supposed to call Rin at the end of each of these scenes to trigger what I wanna trigger. Yeah, I hear it, here it comes, okay. They're great for customs because they don't charge extra for customs, just the standard price for the level of complexity of the order. Oh, that is really nice. That is really, really nice. Uh, not a lot of foreign um, businesses are like that. They do have to charge extra for shipping with, because of customs. Okay, let's call Rin. What have we here? There are footprints on this on this drone machina. 
Okay, so there's footprints on the Machina. So now we're gonna switch to New Road. And we should see a small crowd gathering. They don't charge extra for custom order. In oh, custom order instead of default. You still have the extra shipping costs. Oh, oh, custom, not customs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is what you want to see on New Road. You want to see the uh, this crowd gathering. That makes sense, Koneko. I'm silly. The heck. <laughs> okay, we're gonna call Rin. You called? Hmm. There are marks here indicating something fell into the ravine. It seems we are getting closer to the heart of the matter. Okay, Perhaps so whenever he says that, will yield the clues we need. whenever he says that, you finished a phase, and there's three phases, so that finishes phase one for us. Now we're on phase two. So for the start of phase two, we need to go to Hover Crash Site. Yeah, so there we go. And you should see a group of Machina around the Hover. Yeah, so there they go. And then once they gather around the hover, we're going to call Rin again. Have you found something? How awful. I keep forgetting not all the lines are voice acted. <gasps> the Machina appear to have found a wounded man in the brush. Fortunately, his wounds are not severe. I will take him to safety after I've surveyed the area. Okay, so Rin found a man. Alright, so then what we're gonna do is go to Shinra's Calm Sphere here. That's the one that he placed earlier. And I don't think anything specific happens here. I think you just need to go here and call Rin. Have you found something? Nothing out of the ordinary here. Okay. So then what we're going to do is go to the travel agency front. And there should be the Chocobo Eater. Over here, I think. Yeah. Okay. So you see how he's chasing? He's chasing that gull. My camera was blocking the beginning of it. But anyway, we call Rin. Have you found something? How strange, that fiend never used to feed on the spirit gulls. Could it have expanded its palate? Okay, so then we're going to go to the travel agency back. And if you zoom in on the terminal, someone should approach. There we go. And then she's going to do something with the terminal, and then we call Rin. Allow me to investigate. Can I help you? And she runs away. <laughs> it was just a simple question. Maybe she has something weighing on her conscience. Yeah, guilty conscience. Okay, so then we're going to go to New Road. We should see the Chocobo Eater again. There it goes. I hear the hover. Yep, so the Chocobo Eater is chasing a hover. So we call Rin again. Allow me to investigate. Is it attacking the hover? No, it is almost as though we're trying to eat it. My, my. It seems we are getting closer to the heart of the matter. Perhaps further investigation will yield the clues we need. All right, so this is now starting phase three. Thank you so much for the lurk, Koneko. We love our lurkers here. Have fun packing. Have fun packing. Hopefully it doesn't take you too long. I hope hopefully it's easy. Okay, so for part three, we're gonna go to the travel agency front. And you should see um, over here, I think. Yeah, Rin talking to this guy. You called? The man we found injured on the old road earlier spoke deliriously as I brought him here to safety. 
This is new information has proven most enlightening. Okay. So now we're going to go to travel agency back. And we should see a guy on the roof. I remember right, this takes forever to actually trigger. Ah, there he is. Okay. Now we're going to call Rin. Oh, and then he falls. Have you found something? I'm glad to see he's not hurt. Thankfully, the drone Machina also seems to be all right. If a shock alone causes it to malfunction, we could be in trouble. Machina, shock. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I believe it is all starting to fall into place. Okay. I will handle the rest of the investigation and think more on this evidence. I am grateful for your help, Lady Yuna. Okay, so if we did everything right in this and we saw Riku fall when we did the Chocobo mission here a couple chapters ago, we should get the answer that we want. So, let's be done. Okay, so that's all we're going to do for now. We'll finish it when we go back later. But let's go ahead and save and make sure we have the right percentage points. Oh, nope, we're going to do new data. Yes, new data. Okay, we should be at 64.6% now. So let's go into our fancy calculator thing. Yep, 64.6. Okay, fantastic. All right, so that's all that you would do in Mihen during this kind of like first comm sphere phase. There's a second comm sphere phase coming later where we will finish that little that little investigation. Now we're going to go watch Jose Temple. So for Jose Temple, this very first scene here is worth percentage points. So you definitely want to watch this one. So to get it triggered, you zoom in on these two guys right here. Gipple is missing? On our own. Alright, got an Albed primer. Alright, the rest of the scenes here in Jose are not worth percentage points, but we're going to watch them so that you guys can see them. I think it's this guy. You zoom in on this guy back here. A fiend in Beaconel Desert? Something about Vegnagun. What that has to do with Vegnagun? Don't know enough Albed to be sure of what he's saying. <laughs> oh well, okay. We'll have to do a new game plus so we can see all the Albed properly. Alright, let's, let's watch the next Jose scene. So if you told Leon and Aid to come to Jose, you'll get a scene with them here. Um, but we didn't do that. We told them to go to Kilika. So instead, the next scene is with this guy. Faith. So this is about the hole Yuna fell into, but I don't know what he's saying. So we'll have to learn more, I'll bet, and do it again in another playthrough. All right, we're going to go back again. Turn the camera to the right, and you can observe this conversation. Do I have to zoom in too? Yeah. I cannot do without parts from Beaconel. Alright, so they're talking about parts from Beaconel. 
That will be important later. Okay, this scene is with her. I think we have to zoom in to trigger it. Password. Cactus again? <gasps> Primer! Okay, something about a cactus password. This is the last scene for here. All you gotta do is look to the right. And then she approaches. What's up, lady? Parts? <laughs> Yoink! They stole the comm sphere! They stole it! Okay. That's all the Jose Temple scenes. So we only got 0.2% for that for the very first scene that we saw. We don't get percentage points for any of the others. So let's save and make sure that that's what happened. So we should be at 64.8% now. Yep, we are. Okay, fantastic. Next, we're gonna watch... Uh, yes. Next, we're gonna watch the Guado Salam scenes. So we already watched the Moonflow scenes last time. And you do get percentage points for this very first one. Where's LeBlanc? Boss ain't here. Yup, she just up and left. Went out looking for clues to what happened to Nuge. Logos is out looking for her now. Those guys don't know anything, do ya? Well, I'm sorry, but we haven't heard a thing. Well, if you find anything, you let me know. Don't worry, Ormi, we'll tell you, since we're frenemies now. All right, let's look at the other Guado Salam scenes. There's some here that are kind of funny. So what you'll see first is these two guards talking to each other. Um, you don't get to know what they say, unfortunately. They just look kind of distraught. They don't know what to do without their leader, LeBlanc, which is a bummer for them. I wonder where LeBlanc's run off to. This time we get to hear them. Logos, too. He hasn't reported in. Well, uh, if they never come back, what do you think's gonna happen to us? Maybe Ormi will take over, and we'll change our name to the Ormi Syndicate. <laughs> if that happens, I'm out of here. Yeah, LeBlanc's the only reason everyone stays here, really. So everyone that's in the LeBlanc Syndicate... They actually like her. Yeah, they actually really like LeBlanc. They're there for her. wanted to leave the syndicate we wouldn't have any place to go your leader went and blew up the place you used to live right you've done it oh <laughs> well i chickened out and deserted the crusaders during operation Meehan. my folks back home still think i died heroically in battle how can i possibly go back to them now who is there to take us in Feed us when no one else would? LeBlanc! No questions asked. That's why you'll never see me complaining, no matter how hard she works us. Well, there are times I feel like complaining, but then I figure, what the hey? You thinking what I'm thinking? I sure am. Anything, Anything goes for LeBlanc! LeBlanc. 
guess she has some hidden virtues. Unlike a certain leader I could name. <laughs> wow, Shinra. Wow. So this is one of kind of the random silent scenes you get where Ormi will come out and do a bunch of random poses. And then he'll go like talk to the guard. And I think I think this one and the next one's kind of come in a random order. Because there's another one too that we haven't seen yet with a female syndicate member. I want to see if I can get that one to trigger. Yeah, that's the one we saw before with the two guards talking silently. See if anything else happens when on this scene. I think they just talk and that's it. I hear footsteps though. Okay. No, there's nothing else on this scene. Okay. So I think for this one, yeah, instead of having a definitive ending scene, there's just these few scenes that kind of cycle around. I'm trying to get the one other one to trigger, but it's just going to be, it's just Ormi posing over and over, I'm pretty sure at this point. That's what it keeps doing. Oh, no, here's something different. Are the two guards going to talk again? Yeah. Okay, there is one other of these random ones that will trigger where a female syndicate member walks into the chateau. That's the, that's the third one. It kind of rotates between these three when you get to the end. All right, so I couldn't get the female walking in to trigger, but y'all just have to trust me on this one. All right, so since only that very first one where Ormi talked to us counts for percentage points, we should be right at 65%. So all we, we just, we don't have to really check that with our tool. We can just save and we should see it flip over to 65. Yep. Okay. So we're good to go still. Want to check the calm spheres? Uh, yes. So next we're going to go over to the Thunder Plains. So to trigger this first scene, you turn the camera this way. And I think a chocobo, yeah, a chocobo comes in and you zoom in on it. A chocobo! Want to catch it? You can do that? Yes, with my latest invention, the choco porter. <clears throat> choco portation successful! So that's what happens in this scene. Um, I wish you could actually catch chocobos like this in this game, uh, but it's just a scene, and that scene does get you some percentage points. Um, there is one other scene that you can see that's not for percentage points. Oh, I hear another chocobo. Oh, it's Choco Portated! Choco Portation successful! What happened? Uh, the Choco Porter's on the fritz? Already? We've only used it twice! Alright, and this is the ending scene. Something about using the Choco Porter somehow in the lightning like broke this calm sphere i have no idea there i don't know what the explanation is but it's broken so those are the thunder planes ones and you only get percentage points for that first scene so we should be at 65.2 now so let's go check and make sure Yep, 65.2, perfect. Huh, 
punished Venom Karen, <laughs> Metal Cure <Gear> Terry. <laughs> Hello, Blue. How are you doing? Why you you having a good weekend? <laughs> <laughs> what good opening lines blue what good opening lines <laughs> all right next we're gonna go over to makalania doing decent good i'm glad i'm glad decent is good all right when we go to makalania woods there's two different ones there's wood entrance and there's travel agency for woods entrance the first one you do get percentage points for so let's go there Watch some Stephen King movies and more Stephen King movies than I expected this weekend. Oh, which ones did you watch? We were all sleeping quite happily when we had a peculiar dream. During our sleep, the faith did speak. Spirit shakes, churns, and spins. A fearsome power lies within. Now it's gone and sucked us in. This horrid dream, what could it mean? The faith that protected Spira are not immune to the forces of destruction. These woods, too, will perish, and we along with them. It's so bleak that the musicians are saying they're not going to survive much longer because the woods aren't going to survive. Hearts in Atlantis. Oh, I've not seen that one. I don't know anything about that one. Okay, we're gonna go to Woods Entrance one more time. There's different scenes here, whether you actually stopped Garrick in the previous chapter or whether you failed to. We actually did, so we're gonna watch the one where we actually stopped him. So if you actually stopped him, you see these two Guado here. I don't think they do anything. I think they just stand there. So next playthrough, we'll have to not stop Garrick so that we can see what happens. All right, those are all the scenes in the Makalania Woods entrance. Now we need to go to the travel agency. The first scene at the travel agency also is worth percentage points. You zoom in on the door, Owaka comes out. Hello, Owaka at your service. How's the shop doing? Uh, uh, mm, not so good, really. Um, <laughs> nothing but fiends around here. Hardly see any customers at all. But I decided to stand by me shop, and stand by me shop I will. Oh, Owaka. Just you watch. I'll be bigger than Rin. All the travel agencies in Spira will be operating under the name of Owaka. I believe in you, Owaka. You can do it. So this scene is worth points, and you only get it if you paid off his debts before. I thought the eye patch was just cosplay. <laughs> well, you know, I have a bunch of them now. I could use it as cosplay, too. That would be really nice. <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm trying to save you guys from looking at my gross black eye. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, uh, pictures and story and stuff is in the Discord. Hello again, Karen. How are you doing today? All right, there are a couple of other scenes um, with Oaka if you paid off his debts, so we're going to watch those. They're really nice. What happened? Um, I wish something cool and interesting happened, but... But no, I was watching TikToks in bed and I dropped my phone on my face. That's what happened. <laughs> it's not it's not a cool or fun story, <laughs> but that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's watch another Oaka scene. Mm, I didn't mean to come here. I meant to go to the travel agency. There we go. Think I have to zoom in again for this scene? Maybe not. 
Okay, how do I trigger this one? I'm seething because someone tried to take advantage of my expertise in fixing characters and lore to try to use me and a bunch of our peers to write a story for him. But other than that mild headache, oh my god. Okay, I have thoughts on that. Let's watch the Zoaka scene first, though. And still no customers. Yeah, sorry, Owaka. There's only fiends out here. There's no- because no one comes to the temple. It's underwater. Okay. I have seen people do this, where they create RPs and they think that they're somehow going to turn that RP into a novel. Exactly what you went through is why I tell people, like, when they think that they're going to, like, use their same novel setting for their, like, group RP or whatever, I tell them, no, do not fucking do that. Because it just creates this situation. Whether you actually intend to turn, like, the RP itself into your novel versus just like using the same world or whatever like it never turns out good because when people find out they feel like super used like roleplay is supposed to be free you're not supposed to be using it for profit and i just i'm just like really bothered by people doing that but that's not the first time i've heard it and i'm sure it will not be the last i think it's i think it's super wrong i'm not on board for that i don't think that like the actual like creative content of rp should be monetized you know what i mean don't add in that one in the life hack section. Because <laughs> that definitely looks like a what? Oh my god. Whenever I drop my phone on my face, my eyes are normally fully shut. My eyes were shut too. It hit the bone. Like the corner of my phone, like here's here's my phone. Let me flip it around. Here's my phone. Like the corner right here hit the bone. That's what happened. Roleplay's supposed to be free, not monetized. Yeah, that's what I think. Like you shouldn't be taking like your D&D campaign or your group role play or whatever or your role play with someone else and try to like turn it into a book because you guys made that together as a group. You know what I mean? I once made an RTP based on a novel I was writing to test to see if the idea would work for a story, but never to use it to create the story. It's so wrong to get him into trouble because he's apparently getting endorsed from a publisher. Holy shit. Yeah, so like are those people that are in the RP going to get royalties? Like how is he going to prove that he that certain things that happened in the RP weren't in weren't like didn't inspire the novel. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta get everyone's permission. You gotta make sure everyone's on board with that. Like, it's complicated. What if people, like, you know, because weird social things happen in RPs, right? So, like, what if people say, like, yeah, it's cool, but then, like, you offend them somehow because that fucking happens because it's a whole group of people. People get easily offended by all kinds of things that they don't anticipate. And then, like, they're mad and then they're like, I revoke my consent that I gave you. You know, it's like, just don't do it. Like, just don't do it. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Do whatever lore, plot, whatever you've got idea for your novel. Like, don't, j don't like RP that first. Like, if you're going to write a novel based on your RPs, it needs to be like different, you know, like it can't be the same world. It can't be the exact, like, just don't do it. Just don't do it because it's just, because the role play is so collaborative that then you have to like get the other people's endorsement anyway it's just silly like just don't do that you open yourself up to all kinds of nonsense it just doesn't go well all right let's watch another travel agency scene with Owaka. I guess the way to trigger these is to look away and look back. That seems to be for the other one, too, is how it happened. Already been a year since he left. Who's he? Who's he? It's probably his brother. It's probably his brother. Remember his brother helped us out in 10 whenever uh, Owaka himself got arrested? Remember that? That's probably the he who he's talking about. He was like, I'll also advertise your novel and stuff. And I'm actually, actually, I don't want someone endorsing my book at all. Yeah, like, it's just, it's just not comfortable. It's just not comfortable. Like, he should have asked your permission up front. But even then, like, I just don't see it going well. He got into trouble in the RK, RFP community for ERP with minor. Holy shit. Well, that's a whole nother level. That's like a completely different level of messed up. Yeah. Uh, don't do that with minors. <laughs> the fuck? People are dumb. Why? Uh, I know why. Don't answer that. Don't, don't answer that. I know why. I just, that's, yeah. 
don't do that. My God. This guy's like a walking don't do that. I would make a joke about him being inspired by Nabokov, but I know it's... Yeah, yeah, I know. And also, it, in Nabokov, like, clearly the narrator, Humbert Humbert, is the villain. Like, he's not a good guy. And it's very obvious when you read the book that Nabokov doesn't think Humbert Humbert's like a good guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So very different. Um, I want nothing to do with guy. Yeah, don't blame you. Like that, let alone him advertising his book. I don't want other work linked. Yeah, for real, for real. Like that's just like really uncomfortable. Definitely not. Definitely not. <sighs> yeah. Uh, same. But guys, I swear it wasn't romantic. Well, you know, but RP is different. Okay. Like RP is very different than like writing a solo book. Cause when you're just writing a book by yourself, you're not actually involving the minor. Like it's just words on a page, but a role play with another person that is a minor is different. Like you're involving them in that steamy conversation. Like that's what makes it not right. It's not about the characters. It's about the fact that the other person you're appealing with is a minor. Like that's not, that's not good. That's not good. He knew their age too, which makes it work. So of course he did. Of course he did. My God. All right, let's watch, let's watch another Owaka scene. These are sad scenes in between talking about craziness matching the vibe okay so let's do the same thing again we'll look away oh that was quick that time oh Oaka. i feel so bad like, I kind of want to front him the money to buy a better, a better, like, agency. Okay, there's another. He did. He chose a very bad place to set up his shop. We're, we're talking, it's all about poor decisions today. All about poor decisions. Poor moral decisions. Uh, poor relationship decisions, poor business decisions. Okay, I thought I was look away. Okay, maybe I zoom in this time. Yeah, zoom in this time. Okay. Kima, Peck, Congela, <gasps> Widow, Waka. Uh, he's doing it in Albed. That's funny. So another sales pitch one. <laughs> Hearing Albed in his accent is really funny. Okay, for this, this is the last Oaka one, so I know for this one I gotta put the camera to the right. We hear footsteps. <gasps> Who's that? Ugh, it's hard to come home like this after a whole year being away. It's once! I wonder if my brother's still upset. Go say hi to him once. Go say hi. He doesn't. I think he just stays on the screen like this. I don't think he even leaves the screen. All right, there's a couple of other travel agency scenes. These are scenes that you will get after you've watched all the Owaka scenes, or if you didn't pay off Owaka's debt, these are the scenes that you'll see. And it's the fiends. So these are kind of like the um, the Guado Salam ones that we just watched. There's like three of them, and they kind of like rotate. So let's see if we can trigger all three or if we won't. So this is one of them where he's kind of like attacking the agency. And I want to see if I can get the flan one. Ah, uh, no, it's this one again. There's one, there's him doing this, this, there's this guy doing this. This is, um, uh, Barba, Barbata or something like that. Barba something. There's one with a flan and then there's one where it's the flan and the little spiky guy. Uh, there's the flan. So you can see the flans kind of slithering by. And then there's a third scene where it's just the flan without the spiky guy in the background. So that's basically all the other Makalania scenes. And you'll get these scenes um, even if you don't pay off Owaka's debt. So this will be all you get then. Also, I had to deal with a toxic person who tried to tell me my friend needs mental help because she finally cut him off. Leave it, let it never be said that I let people get away with that. 
tore into both of these toxic people today and did not pull punches. Good. That's good. People get real bold on the internet, you know what I'm saying? Think they can do all kinds of things and say all kinds of things. It's nonsense. And let me ask you this, Karen, because I because you spend a lot of time online as well. I feel like that since the pandemic, all this type of stuff, these type of like interactions online have gotten way worse and crazier and more frequent. Like people, people are crazy now in ways they didn't used to be. Like all this stuff used to happen, but I feel like it didn't happen nearly as often. All right, so we did get some percentage points from both the first uh, Makalania Woods entrance scene and the Makalania Woods travel agency scene, just the first ones. So we should be at 65.6%, um, which is exactly right. That's what we're at. They really have. Yeah, like they have like this type of stuff, like it happened, but not as frequently, not as intense. Like things have gotten weird since basically the start of 2023. Since basically the start of 2023, when we all just kind of decided pandemic's over, even though it's not really, like, people have just gone bonkers. All right, we are on Beaconel Desert now. There is some scenes here that are worth points, and there's two different ones here, Excavation Camp and Cactuar Nation. So let's go to the Excavation Camp. We can actually get percentage points for this first Excavation Camp scene. I think you have to zoom in on her, yeah. What's up, Nautila? How are things over there? Another perfect day for digging. Everyone's hard at work. But one thing. Lately, there's been a pretty nasty fiend wandering in the desert. Think you could help us out? Any time you could spare a hand would be fine. Help you? You will. That's great. <laughs> we were asking Nadala. Oh no, Nadala. Shinner, stop! Don't you contribute to this nonsense. She's not a doormat. I had left that guy's community long before my friend did because she thought he would change, and he knew that I take no BS from anyone to the point that I was apparently the only female in the community he didn't try his luck with and yet thought I would take his side. Why would he even reach out to you then if you had left? People are so weird. All right, there's one other excavation camp scene that we can see. It's not worth any um, any percentage points or anything, but basically you just watch the diggers work. Not a lot is not there, but these guys basically just continue digging and you can kind of watch them and see them dig. And that's kind of the, the only scene, like you can watch that over and over if you want to. Now we can also go to the Cactuar Nation. Um, none of this is worth percentage points at the Cactuar Nation, but there is a scene that we can watch. He apparently didn't realize I left. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Wow. Perceptive. Okay. I'm trying to remember how I trigger this one. Do I just, I think maybe I zoom in on Marnala? Maybe I go all the way to the right? Come on, scene, trigger. I know there's a scene here. I know there is. Maybe I need to zoom this way. It's not worth any percentage points, but I want to show it to you guys. Oh, I hear it. I hear the I hear the noise. I hear the cactuar noise. You guys hear it? Okay, how do I get the trigger? This is hopeless <gasps> without Benzo. Oh. Okay. So that's what happens. 
Yeah, you can hear it. I don't see him. But anyway, it's Yuna saying that line, this is hopeless without Benzo. That's the scene. The bane of perfect playthroughs. Hello, Nightless. How are you doing? Welcome in, by the way. If you love um, RPGs, we play a lot of them on this channel. We have a 100% playthrough of Final Fantasy X. Uh, this is a new, new Yevon run of Final Fantasy X 2 that we're doing right now. Uh, we also have a 100% playthrough that we've done of uh, Majora's Mask. Um, in addition to uh, single player role playing games like this, we also really love The Sims 2. We play that quite a lot. And then um, I do a monthly ish. Sometimes it's one, twice a month. It kind of depends. Anyway, it's a podcast, media analysis podcast. Right now we're reading through all of Hunger Games. We're actually going to be doing The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes uh, sometime in September. So if any of that interests you, uh, drop me a follow, hang out, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I will be able to hear stream, but I have to BRB. I need crumpets. Get you some crumpets, girl. Get you some crumpets. You deserve it after all that stress this morning. I mean, it's only noon and you've all, you've had all that already. I was in a retro mood today since I'm playing Shadow Hearts as we speak and chilling with other retro. Fuck yeah, nice. Um, we love retro role play games here. We absolutely love them. All right, so if we go back to the Cactor Nation. Ah, thank you so much for the follow, friendo. Thank you so much. Um, if we go back to the Cactor Nation, it, there's no activity. Like if you... If you're just here, like she's not gonna say anything else, you can just watch cactuses. But that's basically the scenes. So the only one that got us any percentage points was that first one with Nautila. Um, so let's go save and make sure what we're at. We should be at 65.8 now. So let's check with our handy dandy little tool. Yep, 65.8. Okay, fantastic. Our next stop is Bavel. Wanna check the comm spheres? Yes, I do. Yeah, we mostly play older games on here. It's it's pretty rare that we play newer games. The 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 newer games that we do play is dating sims sometimes. Um, but for the most part, we're playing games from like the early 2000s, 90s, mid 2000s, you know, stuff like that. Obviously, Pain is a DRK. How can you not? I know, right? We're, we've got them all on Berserker now because I'm trying to level up Berserker because that's such an OP dress sphere. Um, but typically, uh, like my dream team is like Pain and Yuna on the Dark Knight and uh, Riku on Alchemist. I use that quite a lot. All right, so let's go next to Bavel. So there's a couple of scenes that we have to watch here before we get the scene that's actually worth percentage points. So let's watch a couple of them. I miss the dress sphere system for this game. It's amazing, right? They're probably planning an attack right now. Do your jobs. They're mad that they let Maroda in to spy. <laughs> yeah, the combat of this game is amazing. It's so good. I've caught an intruder. <gasps> Posse is not an intruder. Get past you. Mm. <laughs> oh, goodbye. The we kindergarten is just beating everyone up. <gasps> Good job, you three. Good job. I missed the dress fear system from this game three times. <laughs> Three times mascot in Via Infinito was so glorious, for real. We haven't gotten there yet. This is a fresh playthrough. It's not a new game plus. Um, but yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so that's a fun scene, but it's not worth percentage points. Um, the next scene with the Kindergartians is worth percentage points. What's this thing? Boom! Whoa! This is called a comm sphere. Shinra invented it. Yeah, when I grow up, I want to build cool stuff too, just like Mr. Shinra. <laughs> I'm just a kid. <laughs> You're Shinra? Just a kid? Mm -hmm. Just a kid. With some practice, anybody can make one of these. Even me? You've got plenty of time to learn. Hey, will you show us how to make them sometime? <gasps> yes. My pleasure. I wish I could play sometime too. You're on. Definitely. You got a deal. 
I love this scene. It's so cute. It's so cute. And then if we go back, there's no activity at this point. I mean, the comm sphere is not broken or anything, but like nothing else happens. If you come back here after that point, that Shinra and Kindergartians conversation, you don't ever see anything else. So this is it. This is all there is. So watching those should put us right at 66%. So let's go check. Yep, right at 66%. All right, Calm Lands is up next. So there's two ones here as well. There's the Chocobo Ranch and the Travel Agency. The only one that has anything worth percentage points is at the Chocobo Ranch, but we're going to watch the Travel Agency ones too. Um, there's a reason you want to get all, all the way to the end of the Travel Agency scenes. I'll show you. So the first scene is really just watching customers come up and make purchases. I think it's like three customers that end up coming up. We don't really have to watch all of them, but that's basically what happens in this first scene. And I can't remember if you watch... Oh yeah, it's customers again. So there's two two diff two scenes with different customers. So you see the running lady first in the second one. There's this one. So two different customer scenes. Then the next one, we're going to zoom in on the guy that we're doing the marriage quest with. He's not doing it. It's doing. I think it's doing customers again. Okay, let's go about out and back in. Maybe I didn't linger long enough on the customer scenes. Oh yeah, here we go. Once the sun is back there, you want to zoom in on these guys. I'm pretty sure this will trigger it. Come on. There we go. He's going to go back and try to comfort his son. Tech support wizard here checking in to make sure there's no problems today. Oh my God. Thank you, Devon. Thank you so much. No, we're good today. We're good. It was just wow yesterday. The heck, the heck. But thank you so, so much. Now I know. I know I, when that craziness happens, I need to look into my Logitech tool. All right, there's one more travel agency scene that we need to watch. And it's for zooming in on this guy. And he runs up here and brings down a chest. Very interesting. And he's putting something in the chest. And then he pushes the chest back. Okay, so we're going to have to remember that for chapter five and we can come back here. All right, so that scene is why you want to watch them anyway. Um, we're going to go get that chest later. Okay. There's one more travel agency scene that we're going to watch because it's funny. Reminds me of a Fallout RuneScape combo. Oh my gosh. Fiends. Oh my gosh. Why are there so many fiends in the travel agency? And they're all those killer dogs. What the heck? Oh. 
by Comsphere. <laughs> so Comsphere got eaten. Now we can't connect to that one, so now we only go to the Chocobo Ranch one. So you have to have at least one Chocobo to trigger these scenes. If you did not catch any chocobos by the time you ended chapter three, then this scene will not trigger. You have to have at least one chocobo inside your ranch. So that scene wasn't for any percentage points, but this next one is. since we've seen Lady Yuna. Hello! Lady Yuna? We won't be able to visit you for a while. Are the Chocobos doing okay? Take care of them. Of course! Hope to see you sometime soon. You will, Clasco. Okay, so that one's actually worth points. Uh, there is some more, though, so let's keep going. Scolding the chocobo for running away. I want to scratch a chocobo neck. That looks so satisfying. Puppy. They are puppies. They're big bird puppies. Okay, so once you get to here where he just is petting the chocobo, um, that's all he does. You can just watch him pet the chocobo over and over at this point. Okay, so that second Clasco scene got us some percentage points, so we should be at 66.2 now, so let's make sure. And if you accidentally click away from one of these scenes that do percentage points, and it ends up progressing to the next scene, it's still okay. Like, you still end up getting your percentage points, at least based on my testing and playthroughs. But yes, we're at 66.2% now. Yes, I do. All right, next up is Mount Gagazette. Hey, Kamari, I'm going to be in a concert. Bring the rest of the Ronso and come watch. Kimari cannot. Elder Kimari have duty. Kimari cannot leave mountain. That's too bad. I really wanted you to come listen. Kimari, listen. Song join hearts. Yuna, sing from heart. Kimari, hear Yuna's song. Kimari, believe this. You're right. You're right. I'll do my best, Kimari. Aww. So for this scene right here, um, it will be different depending on if you uh, stopped Garrick in Chapter 3 or not. Final Fantasy X-2, you'll lose percentage points unless it's New Game Plus and you've seen the scene already for skipping scenes. I don't, that's, that doesn't, I don't think that's true. Like if you do a New Game Plus, like you don't lose points for skipping scenes. You just don't gain the points for that scene. At least based on all the testing that I've done, like I've done, I have a tool that actually will load your save file and tell you the exact like points. Cause it's like, there's fractions of a points point as well. Um, and I've never, I've never encountered it like losing points, just like not gaining the points. Oh, not like subtract points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll just miss out on them. Okay, okay. So we are saying the same thing. Okay, I was nervous for a second. I was like, there's a spot that does that? I've never experienced that. 
No, I understand. But yes, that is true. That is true. You don't want to skip scenes or you're not going to get points. But that's not that doesn't seem to be true of the comm sphere scenes, at least in my experience. Um, but I don't know. I've not fully, fully tested it. <laughs> you're OK. You're OK, Knight. You're OK. So this is the other scene that you can get. Um, the female Ronso will be giving Kamari a back massage. I assume this is like Kamari's wife. We don't really talk to her very much. She has a few lines that we talk to her, but that's what I think. I think this is Kimari's wife. All right, now we're gonna go to the hot springs. So that first scene was worth percentage points, by the way. And in the hot springs, there's a several, several scenes that are worth percentage points. And you kind of have to get all the way to the end. So basically there's a ton of these hot spring scenes we're about to watch and you have to watch all of them. So here's the first one. Good thought. I wish you could melt away grudges. I remember because I got the game for Christmas when it came out and I did accidentally press a button during a scene it was almost about to end and it didn't count. <gasps> and I didn't have a backup save. Oh no. Yeah. I think this game though, like, I feel like the developers must have really thought people were going to just New Game Plus and play it over and over and over again. Like the way it's structured, that seems to be the intent of what you're supposed to do is just play it over and over and over. But I don't think most people do that. All right, so that's the first one um, where the Ronso youth hopes that his grudge will melt away. For the second one, you got to go to the right side of the screen here. See that little cactuar? And zoom in on it. <gasps> Here of all places. Here. And it runs away as soon as it notices us. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's crushing. That's crushing night. A game called Valkyrie Profile did something very similar. You'd have to get the perfect ending purely by accident with sheer luck, so they expected you to play multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Uh, modern games don't really do that, but stuff like that definitely appeared in these older games. Like, they just had... Developers just had different expectations of gamers at the time, you know? All right, this next Hot Spring scenes is actually worth percentage points, but you have to watch the other two to get to it. It's Tobley! I love how everyone goes into the hot springs. Ah, that really hit the spot. I love how everyone goes into hot springs in their regular clothes. Oh, I'm totally. If Ten Tour were a shorter game or a mechanic to go back to previous chapters, I'd be inclined to play certain things over and over. A full playthrough, though, is too much multiple times. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But it's I find it so much easier to do a whole playthrough um, when I'm streaming it and hanging out with you guys. So I didn't actually beat Final Fantasy X-2 until kind of recently. We did our for our um, thank you for 400 followers. We did like a get to 100% in a week. I didn't even end up having to start a new game plus to make that happen. So we did a whole playthrough. I missed some percentage points, but then I did new game plus and I got some extra percentage points. Like I sped through chapter one and, and just chose um, the other faction for chapter two and then got to 100%. But anyways, I had never actually beaten the game until then because it's, it's not, I mean, it's not long, but it's not short either. It's not a short game. All right, these next couple of hot spring scenes are um, not worth percentage points, but again, you have to watch them to get to the ones that are. What's this? So toast. <laughs> what the? Hi, pillow, having fun. I want to hang out with them.
I want to go to the Mount Gagazet hot spring. It looks so fun. All right, next one. <gasps> Shoe puff. Shoe puffs can only warm their feetsies. I returned with crumpets, Earl Grey tea, and vegan ice cream. Oh my god, that sounds delicious. That sounds delicious. It's Sunday, so we're doing our typical wings and sushi from Publix today. I'm excited. Hi, Shoe Puff. You're so big. Then there's this random guy. I think he just swims around. I don't think he gets out of the water or anything. I'm not keen on wings, but I love sushi. I love both. This it? <laughs> I guess her saying this it is supposed to be my signal that no, Karen, nothing else happens here. You can leave. All right, so those three we just watched are not worth percentage points, but these next ones are. Also, I love this next one, it's so funny. He's training for Blitzball tryouts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for this one, you come over here. That felt good. Shameless. I love Buddy. Absolutely fucking shameless. Two kids. <laughs> See, Buddy understands. All right, so after that one, you have to go back into the Comsphere network because there are more Caught Spring scenes. Awaka! With his backpack in the Hot Spring. That's cool. I like that one. Welcome to a walkers. Hmm. Welcome <laughs> to a walkers. I think I'm onto something. Yeah. I think you're not. <laughs> Shinra, don't be mean. We love Awaka here, okay? Awaka helped us. He didn't even really fully understand what we were doing, and he helped us. He believed in us. Sounds like a spoopy ghost, yes. Love Awaka. Alright, so th those, those are worth percentage points. This next one isn't, though. I think you have to go over here to see it. Or maybe you zoom in on the girls. There we go. I heard the footsteps. Excuse me, who are you, sir? Who are you? Oh, it's Wants. Wants, what are you doing? Are you embarrassed because you're being a peeping Tom? You should be. You should be embarrassed about that. Yeah, caught. Run away. Don't kick the comps on your way out. All right, so that one's not worth any percentage points, but these next few are.
How's life treating you, Asaru? Same as always. With you, it's always same as always, isn't it? Hey, did you guys hear? Lady Yuna's a spear hunter now! The fact that I don't change is one of my better assets. Can't you accept that? Um, what's an asset? Do I have a asset too? Asset? Only other people can tell you what your assets are. They're not something you can judge on your own. Baroda, may I have a word with you? What? Wow. You took that way too seriously, Saru. Come on now. So that's worth percentage points. I got myself a proper tea ball so I can have loose leaf tea. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, I have one of those, um, the, it's like a, it's a coffee mug, but it's got like the tea insert that goes inside of it and like has a lid and everything. Oh my god, I love it. I love it for loose leaf tea. It's the best. I highly recommend getting one. Tea balls are great too, but, um, but this thing is like amazing. I love it. All right, this next one is also worth percentage points. She gets a different model. Have you heard what Clasco's doing these days? I don't know. Why would I know what he's up to? Uh, I hope he's all right. I'm sure he's off somewhere gushing about how much he loves his good little chocobo. <laughs> well, maybe he's closer than we think. Yeah, maybe. Like, why does she get to have a different model for a bathing suit? No one else but the three main girls do that. All right, this next one is also worth percentage points. Sacred mud, Gargazette. The permanence of this place is palpable. Care to hear about it? <laughs> the monkey runs away. Oh, pity. I want to hear about it, Machen. So that one's worth percentage points. This next one is not worth percentage points. However, if you didn't catch any chocobos, you don't get to see it. This is the life. Oh, relaxing with a chocobo. I just want to sit here doing nothing. Every time I try to do something, it ends up going wrong. Ah, maybe I can get through life without doing anything at all. Wait for me! Bye, Chocobo. Poor Clasco can't keep up with his poor Chobocobos. All right, their next hot spring scene. This is worth percentage points. I tell you. Sometimes I just don't know what gets into them kids these days, you know? Letting themselves get all bit out of shape up over the <laughs> tiniest little thing. Talking about yourself? Uh, uh, not everyone who gets bent out of shape is a kid. <clears throat> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Just whose side are you on anyway? You're not so young yourself, Missy. <laughs> About time you started acting your age. Sid. I bet we could start quite a business here at the Springs. We'll make a fortune. We could finally rebuild home. Why build a home the Elbed no longer need? 
what in tarnation? So just what have you been saving up all that gill for? I have decided I want my own home. That is what I am working for now. Rian. Listen, Sid. It might be cliché, but times really are changing. <sighs> Even if you rebuilt home, no one would come. People are too busy looking for a new place to belong. I find this part of the story so fascinating because it's like this happens, right? When you have like a group that's a minority, you will have certain individuals that just think if they assimilate into the dominant culture, then everything's going to be fine for them as a minority. Like that's clearly what Rin thinks and Nautilus seems to basically agree with him. Although she mostly hangs out with other Albed, so I don't think she's like acting on those thoughts. Although um, Rin clearly is. So I just find that so fascinating and realistic that uh, they have these different disagreements and thoughts between the different Albed characters in this game. All right, there's another scene. And this next one is also worth percentage points. My, 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 my. Just no fun all alone. Donna, so missing Bartello. All right, so that is it. After you watch the Donna scene, when you come back into the hot springs, there should be no activity. The calm sphere doesn't break or anything like that. It's just like nothing else happens. Now, before we go check our percentage points, we're going to actually go to Xanarkand, because um, there's only one scene in Xanarkand. It's not worth any percentage points or anything, but this is basically it. You can see all the tourists hanging out on Xanarkand. Nothing else really happens, like you don't see any conversations or funny animations or anything like that. It's just Xanarkand with the tourists there, just like when we landed in the previous chapters. All right, let's go save. We should be right at 68% now. All right, that says 68. I'm just gonna make sure I've got this noted right. If it says 68, that should be correct. Make sure, yeah, it's 68.0, so nothing. Okay, sweet. All right, so that is all of the Calm Sphere part one. We saw everything possible. Next stop, the moon flow. Sorry, kids, no side time for side trips. So once you're done with the comm spheres and you're ready to progress, then you come talk to Buddy and uh, it's time to go to the moon flow. So let's go. And it won't let you go anywhere else. You can only go to the moon flow. Huh? Yikes, sorry. Must have dropped you off at the wrong place. As long as you're there, why not take a little stroll? All right, so we got to find Tobley. Now, before we do that, we actually can talk to this lady for some percentage points. So for publicity, you do the third one. And then for matchmaking, you do the first one. Um, this Moonflow area right here is the only chance we get to do uh, marriage and PR points. Next, we can come up here. If you run into Tobley, make sure to inform me immediately. We're looking for Tobley. He's not in this bush. Okay, you're right. He's not. Hey, you. You haven't seen Tobley anywhere around here, have you? We have word that he's somewhere nearby. Hey. Huh? Uh -huh. Right there. there you are. There he is. I see him. All right, so they're chasing Tobley too, just like us. So now we got to chase him down as well. Tobley, come back. I need your expertise. Hey, 
So we do get to do a little bit of fighting here, so let's see how much we can get on our Berserkers. We've got bigger fish to fry. We sure do. Alright, so I actually don't remember where we are on the Berserker abilities. Okay, or everybody's working on Auto Regen. Right, okay, sweet. So maybe we can get Auto Regen during this little se segment. Noxious midget found him. That's a rude word. Don't you say that? I know you're mad at him, but gosh, you don't need to use that word. <gasps> a chocobo. Let's catch it. Yay! He's probably not, um, he's probably not Bolt because he's on the Meehan High Road, but he might be, you never know. So we're gonna catch him. Where'd that little ball of pudge learn to run like that? I'm beat. He's speedy. We can't keep up! Come back here, you beak-faced fraud! Right, that guy's too tired. <gasps> Another chocobo! How many chocobos did we catch before? I want to make sure I don't catch too many, but I don't remember. I want to say I needed like four or five more or something like that. So maybe we'll catch like four chocobos and if more spawn, we won't catch them. Because I don't want to accidentally push out any of my bold ones. in here no that's must that's later that's later we gotta go all the way up to the moon flow that's right we gotta come back Catch that chocobo! I gave up chasing Tobly. All that running was just too much. Well, I'm gonna keep running. All right, this kid. Oh. This way, sir. Yeah, no, can't say I've seen him. He must still be on the south bank. Go take another good look. Oh, yes, sir. All right, this kid also is worth um, publicity. So you, if you do publicity with him, you can do the fifth one. 
Now, we can't walk this way. Like, they literally won't let you. It's collisioned. So we have to go back this way. Hey, why are you running that way? I love how he runs. That's definitely comfortable and not going to hurt your neck. Go, go, go. We can catch him. Oh. Uh-oh. He got zooms. How he do that? Cheats. <laughs> These cheats should not be allowed. To be fair, Yuna runs like my older sister. I call it Ruby Moon Run because Ruby Moon from Kari- Oh my god! It's true though! She does run like that. She does! <gasps> Yay! Otto Regan! There we go! Yeah. Hell yeah! It's true. Yuna's run's a little goofy. And it is very, like, anime. Like, card cap the Ruby Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura, you're like, you're totally right. It's the exact same run. Alright, so now we need them to get... Magic counter. I think that's the last one I wanted them to get, right? We've got counter attack, magic counter. Oh no, there's evade and counter after they get magic counter. Okay. Well, let's put everyone on magic counter. They're going to be regaining countering fiends. The auto regan is going to be super useful. Okay. Yeah, the arms. What does she do like this? It's like one arm than the other. I can't really do it in a chair. I'm so happy you knew I meant. I get some weird looks because it's apparently more obscure anime, even though I watched it as a child. Carcaptor Sakura should not be obscure. It's like one of the most popular clamp animes. Also, I was like hella into clamp. Um, I have read basically everything that clamp's ever put oh, out, seen most of the anime versions, even the bad adaptations. Um, I love clamp. And, like, I had thought Cardcaptor Sakura was, like, the most popular clamp thing, um, but maybe not. I don't know. They haven't produced anything in so long. <gasps> hover crash! Oh no, totally crashed his hover! So after he does that, you can get past this area right here. Um... Oh. He says totally cross the moon flow. Follow on sure path, yeah. XXX Holic, the time witch. Yes. Oh my god, I love her. I love Holic. That was awesome. And uh and the companion series to it, Subasa Reservoir Chronicles, so good. So so good. My favorite was X. I'm so sad they never finished it. But I loved X1999. All right, this kid in red right here, you can do publicity with him. Uh you do the fifth one. And then we need to ride the shoe puff. Ride the shoe puff. Oh, yeah, I love Subasa. Yeah, Subasa is awesome. And it's got like the card captor characters in it. And I think it's because they're the most popular, you know? I mean, it's got all the various clamp characters and then a few unique ones, but you know what I mean. All right. Then this lady right here at the bottom of the screen, you can do publicity with her. So you do the fifth one for publicity, and for matchmaking, you do the fourth one. And then we gotta go towards Guado Salam. 
I returned to a clamp series discussion. Yes. Koneko, you love clamp too, right? Ah, he has to be here somewhere. You don't suppose he climbed into one of them trees, do you? Maybe he climbed a tree. Yeah, beat the trees. That'll fix it. <laughs> Maybe if y'all weren't chasing him. Come on now. It links directly to card cardcaptor. Is there a different reality? Yes. Um, that's how that's how uh, Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles works, right? All the characters that are in there are different reality versions of the characters from the other series. I picked an RP muse from Cardcaptor Sakura. You tell me, right? Oh, shoe puff. I knew I knew you were a clamp person, Koneko. Enough is enough already. We'll come to collect some other time. Oh, Tobli owes them money. Everybody be owing everybody money in this game. I'm on a roll. Oh, Pain's poisoned. I didn't even realize. Bam, bam, bam. All right, this elderly lady, just like normal, you can do publicity with her. So for publicity, you do the first one, and for matchmaking, you do the fifth one. All right, Tobley should be in here. There he is. Hi, hi, what can I do for you? What brings you here? Well... Spectacularly spectacular! Twill be a yummy Unipalooza indeed! Twill go down in history! I most definitely, definitely want to arrange it! Can I, can I? Yep, yep! A minor detail, where oh where should it be? Well, the more people we can gather together, the better. Aha! Then how about the Thunder Plains? Yes! You could practically pack a plethora of people in that place! Sounds a little dangerous. Now, how do we get people to come? Simple, simple, leave it to me. My power PR team will push it pronto. Oh, boys. Advertising is our specialty. We'll get you your spectators. Are you sure about this? Brother's orders. Bring every last high pillow back with you. All right. Mission complete. So for this, you get the Black Tabard Garment Grid. We're over the calm lands now. We ready to go? Grab everyone you see! We do not want anyone in spirit to miss this! Leave it to us! Will they be alright? Be back in a jiffy, sister! <laughs> Not to mention, we're still picking up lots of waves through the calm spheres. Nice work. <laughs> All the high pillow have been deployed. A tune, baby, to the concert grounds. All right. So while they're making their way to the concert grounds, we can do a whole other round of calm sphere networking. <laughs> Um, but we need to save first, because I want to make sure we're at the right percentage points. After doing that little moon flow thing, we should be at 69.4 percentage points. So let's use our tool and check. Yep, 69.4. Okay, perfect. 
Let me read about these OCs. Okay, what do we got? I have some card capture OCs. They're referred to as the Eclipse cards. They used to be dark counterparts created to balance out the deck cards similar to the nothing, but I've since changed them to be new cards created by the cards grief and frustration over losing their original master. Oh my god, that's so sad. Because I want my, my fic to be out about coping TM, of course. My more Sun and Moon cards, Artemis and Apollo. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. Remember I even looked up little summoning circles for them? I have no time to RP these days, mood. I love that Final Fantasy Recycles names wasn't Shinra the company in 7. Yes, Shinra is the company in 7. And um, because of that, there is like a whole, there's a whole like um, fan thing, like a, a headcanon thing that Spira is actually like the way back in the past of um, the world that's in Final Fantasy 7. So like hundreds of years in the future or something like that. Um, we get Midgard and stuff like that, and it's actually still Spira. There's a lot of things that make that not make sense, but it's a really cool headcanon, and I, I love that. I think the Shinra here is the same thing as how, like, every Final Fantasy has a Cid and Chocobos and things. Like, I don't think it's really, that was ever really the intention, but I think it's really cool that 10 and 7 both have connections because both of those games have a lot to do with big societal changes. So, um, and I think a lot of people that love Final Fantasy X also have a really warm spot for seven. So I like that. So we can't actually go and check in the calm lands for our percentage points. I mean, for our, our PR and our marriage points, but we should have 735 PR points and 305 marriage points at this point. Um, we did mess up the one. So I know we have slightly less on the PR points. But we should have all of our marriage points. All right, so next what we're going to do is do some more comm spheres. So there's a whole other round of comm spheres we can do, just like we did the others. Um, and there's more percentage points and stuff for this as well. So we're going to kind of start at the top and work our way down. So first is Besaid. And this first one is worth percentage points. And you're supposed to find, yep, there's Beklum and zoom in on him. Beklum. Oh, it's you. It's me. You've probably heard, but I've been called back to Youth League headquarters. It is a shame, though, having to leave Besaid in the hands of slackers. Besaid will be fine. Walk us there to keep an eye on things. <sighs> Small consolation. If you ask me, his brother was ten times the man Waka is. Oh, don't say that. We fought in the Crusaders together. He always talked about Waka. Said, my brother's the greatest person in Spira. Imagine my surprise to find out the legendary Waka's nothing more than a wishy-washy wimp. There were so many things I'd wanted to talk to Waka about, but not anymore. Beklum, you're wrong. Things. What kind of things? Memories. Well, that's enough chit-chat. I need to get ready to leave. I don't like Beklum's attitude there at all. It's messed up. Sid first came in Final Fantasy IV and has been there in all of them since in one way or another. Yes. Biggs and Wedge are always in them too. Yes, 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 they are. Sid's super important in 16. I'm not going to... Oh, I haven't I haven't played 16. I don't know. I wasn't like super drawn to it. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people really loved it, but I just... I don't know. It seemed like so dark because I watched Levi play parts of it. And I was like, uh, I don't know. I might play it someday. That's cool. I love Sid. Yes, I want to do... I want to play 16 but can't yet. Oh, like not a good enough machine or something. I mean, it's not out on PC yet. That's what I'm, I'm considering, like whenever they release it on PC to play it. I like dark stories. Yeah, but it seemed like so dark. I don't know. I don't know. So that one was worth percentage points. The next Besaid scene, this one is also worth percentage points. Shame on you, Yuna. What did I do? What's this about a concert? Doing something fun like that, even though you know I can't leave Besaid. <laughs> Not very thoughtful. Sorry. I got tired of just standing around. You couldn't resist helping out. You haven't changed at all, have you? Even though you so wanted to. You could tell? How many years have I known you? You don't need to rush. You know, the most important changes happen naturally and usually turn out better than if you tried to force them. So that's how it works? In my experience, at least. Hey, Lou! 
You sure it's all right to be walking around so much? You got twice as much reason to be careful, yeah? Yes, sir. Take Waka. He probably doesn't even notice it's happening. Huh? Yuna, what's this about? Just girl talk. <laughs> that right. Cause I'm thinking it's a boy. The way it's always kicking and loose stomach. On second thought, maybe he hasn't changed after all. Waka, you've definitely changed. It's PS5 and only have PS4. Oh, okay, that makes sense. 16 is fun to watch, but I don't think you should play it because of the motion sickness. There's parts where you play as an Akon, and those are very disorienting. Oh, yeah, then I probably shouldn't stream it. I should probably just play it like on my own, on my own time. Um, but I'm not going to consider it until it comes out on PC anyways. We do have a PS5, but it's hooked up to like the TV and stuff, and I don't really want to dominate the living room TV, you know, with a, with a game like that. All right, there are some more Besaid scenes. These are not for percentage points, but let's watch them. Hey, Yuna! We heard about your concert. Too bad we can't go cheer you on. Why not? With the baby about to be born, we're kind of worried, yeah? Lulu's fine, but you know Waka. But, uh, we should be able to hear you through this thing, right? We'll be rooting for you. <gasps> That's true, you should. So the Aurochs are going to come watch the concert. You can play the demo, test it, because the demo has the icon part in it. Oh, okay, if you can handle that, you should be good. Oh, good to know, good to know. Yeah, so I could test that out. The demo out. Time for today's surprise interview. Let's turn things over to Butta here in Besaid Village. Uh, they're looking over there, but I don't see Butta. Butta? Uh, Waka, you're oh, that one's Butta. Duh. Tell us how that feels. I don't know, won't really know until I am one, yeah? It seems he doesn't know. That explains it. If he knew, he wouldn't be running around without a clue. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> 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 They're teasing him so much. Yeah, they're gonna be fine without uh, Becklam. They're gonna be just fine without Becklam. Welcome back for round two of our interview. This is Dado reporting from Besaid Village. Which will it be? A bouncing baby boy or an adorable little girl? Waka, come over here. They just staring at him? Come on, dude. Get over here. It's just the guess, Waka. <laughs> this is Ben Dotto on the scene. Poor Waka getting harassed by his buddies.
All right, and the last scene is just Waka pacing around, walking in that triangle. So if all you see is him doing that walking in that triangle, um, you come over here, no one enters from this side to like interview him again or anything like that, then you've seen all the Besaid scenes for this part. All right, let's go to Kilika. Kilika, all the scenes but one are worth percentage points. So um, in in the in the port. So and I think we have to, I think we have to do the port. Yeah, let's go to the port. Yeah, so this is worth percentage points. Why isn't she talking? She's definitely supposed to talk. Donna. Oh, the temple one broke before. That's right, because Bartello breaks it. Without you, the house seems so empty. I can't bear it. Oh, poor I thing. But without seeing your face, it's as though the day hasn't really begun. So please, please, come home, Bartello. No. This is so not me. Come to the concert. <laughs> you, you did not see. I love how the Hypeller just walks in. It just walks right in, like, hey, Donna, what's up? All right, so that's worth percentage points. This next one is not worth percentage points. Forgotten exactly who it is you're supposed to be guarding. I ought to fire you for just up and leaving me the way you did. But I suppose I'm partly to blame, letting you get away with so much. I didn't give you proper supervision. We both need Excuse to me. do some soul searching. Bartello, we're leaving. <laughs> Bartello, we're leaving. <laughs> yes, that should do. Practicing. She's practicing how she's going to talk to Bartello when she sees him again. I didn't. Oh, I missed the line. Anyway, he goes, I didn't see a thing. Okay, let's go back. This one is worth percentage points. are sure to reach the temple. We saw that they did. Remember last time we saw them holding balloons. Let's give it a try. This can be good. All my best for the concert. All right, and there's one more. This one is also worth percentage points. It's Bartello again. Hey, look. These are some balloons that Donna sent us. So we decided to send some back. What about you? It's no good. No matter how many times I try, I overinflate the balloons and <laughs> Oh, will my feelings be stranded here forever? Donna! They might be. And he breaks it with his voice again. 
Yes, again. All right, so after watching both Besaid and Kilika, we should be at 70.4%, because there was two different scenes with percentage points in Besaid and three different ones in Kilika. All right, that says 70. Let's make sure it's 70.4. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. For y'all watching the VOD on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.